All right, welcome back. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you Databerry. So Databerry is a no-code solution on how you can connect your data to large language models. So what do I mean by that? So Databerry will take your data and it offers uh, the ability to embed data in a variety of formats from websites to PDFs to text files. And once you've embedded the data that you wanna have within your data store, you'll be able to have a conversation with it. So think chat. GPT, but it has that uh, guided and potentially more uh, uh, relevant and guided information that you've given it uh, based on the data set that you feed it. So let's just say a hypothetical scenario is say you're a company and you want to have a chat bot that uh, is integrated into your website. Now, if you were to, let's just say, implement the chat GPT uh, API or uh, one of the LLMs from OpenAI. Now those LLMs are trained on data prior to 2021. Some earlier and at the time of recording, there might be some that's you know within a range of that. But the, the big thing to note with them is they're trained with a lag on um, today's date. So let's say you ask ChatGPT uh, about your company. It might say uh, it only has information up to that date. So if you want to have more uh, rele relevant information and up-to-date information, or maybe even information that uh, ChatGPT didn't catch because maybe it wasn't uh, publicly available or within their data set that they scraped to make the model, um, this is how you can integrate that. So I'm going to be going in and showing you how to actually set up and use Databerry a little bit. I'm going to come up with a pretty simple example. Um, what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be showing you an, an example with a recent blog post. So I want to be able to interact with this blog post, ask questions of the blog post, and uh, just sort of show you a simple example on how you can set this up and, and the ease of use on how easy it is to set up. So if I go into agent, um, let's just say I want to, let's call it example data store uh, for this one. I'll go in and I'll click uh, save for now and then I'll head over to my data store. Now, once I have the data store, I'm going to uh, name it the same thing just for continuity. Uh, I'm not going to make it public right now, but as soon as I get here, so I have the options. So we have the option to choose text, web page. We can crawl the web page, but this is a premium plugin uh, that they have. I think it's $25 US a month if you want to use this one. Um, and then they have the files that you can upload, PDF, CSV, JSON, etc. And then coming soon, you have Notion. So in this case, I'm going to use a web page, let's say. And I'm going to head over to the OpenAI website. So if I just, uh, let's just use this tab here, OpenAI. Um, and then let's go to their blog. So I'm actually going to use this blog post here. Um, or actually, let's say, I believe their blog post might be at the bottom of this article. GPT-4, let's say we want to interact with this blog post. So GPT-4 came out uh, before GPT-3.5 was, was trained, and it goes without saying that the LLM wouldn't actually have a context about this particular article. So if I go ahead and name it, I'll say GPT-4 info, and then I paste in the URL here you'll see that it takes um, just a moment here. And once I have it set up, I'll be able to link the data store here. So once I have it linked, I'll just quickly link it here. I'll say, choose, save. And then from there, I'll go into chat. Now let's actually look at something within this article that we could ask it that something like ChatGPT might not get. Um, maybe we go in and we say, what are the percentiles for simulated exams in ChatGPT4? Let's say, So what we've done, so with the data store, they use the text
text embeddings to API from OpenAI, and that will embed the data that you provide it. So once you embed the data, it will be able to uh, quickly provide you a result based on that information. So if I uh, look at the answer here, so it says the simulated scores for GPT-4 are all listed in a table on the OpenAI website. According to the table, GPT-4 uh, achieved high scores in multiple exams, including et cetera, et cetera. I can find uh, more information on the technical report. Can you be more specific, let's say? So obviously you can use this on a host of different things. Uh, I'll go into a couple of their features within uh, Databerry, but you can get a sense right off the bat on how simple this was to set up and you can sort of get your gears turning in terms of how you might apply this in your, your own uh, application or use case. So while this is running, uh, I'm just gonna hop over to a different tab here for a moment. Um, so if I go quickly back into the interface, I just wanted to quickly touch on the apps that they have available. So this is the way that you can train your model recursively on a website. So instead of just providing it a link, say you want it to uh, essentially crawl your website, uh, it will go in and collect all the data sources that are available. Then there is also the Slack bot, and this is similarly a premium version um, where you'll, you'll pay a little bit more to integrate something like this. So say you're onboarding a new employee and there's a particular channel and you want to have a bot that responds to uh, questions they might have, this could be a potential use case for something like that. But I just wanted to point out the apps that they have available right now. So if I go back here, we say, okay, I'm sorry, I'm not sure what you're asking. Could you be uh, provide more context or clarify your question? So let's say, okay, let's say, um, what is the SAT um, score? Okay, so we'll uh, again uh, just give this a moment and you see the score for the SAT evidence uh, based reading and writing is 710 out of 800, which ranks 93rd percentile. So if I go back here, we'll see 710 out of 800 and it is uh, showing the 93rd percentile. So pretty easy to set up, right? So you go and create your agent, create your data store and you're sort of off to the races. Now, if I dig into both of these a little bit more and just go into the configuration between these, so within our data store, we have a handful of things. So we have the AI uh, plugin JSON, we have this YAML file. Um, there's not as much within the data store that you're going to be tweaking uh, once you have it set, uh, set up. Um, but uh, if you head over to the agents, this is where it sort of gets it gets a bit more interesting in my opinion. So if we head down here and you scroll down, you'll see that there's an agent ID where you can query the Databerry API. So say you want to use uh, your own solution or maybe you have a chatbot interface that you've built and you just want to leverage the Databerry API, they have that available integrated into the service. Uh, additionally, if you just want to go down here and integrate the chatbot directly, like you see here in your website, it gives you the ability to uh, do some, you know, brand styling, uh, the positioning, and then also it will give you the embed code to put this on your website. So, um, I'm not going to go into too much more in this video. I just more wanted to introduce Databerry. I'm very impressed with what I've seen already. Uh, I'm going to be diving into actually setting this up locally. And if there's a need or want for it, I'll create a video uh, in depth on how you can also do this and deploy it yourself. Um, but off the bat, it's um, uh, great work to the contributors here on what they've built. I think given what it uh, can do for individuals uh, or companies, um, 
it is uh, pretty competitively priced as well. If I go back to the pricing page here, um, and yeah, it's interesting to see all these different AI apps that are coming out. Um, and yeah, so if you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, subscribe, and until the next one.